is a dream that everybody talks about, winning the lottery, right? You've all thought about this. Well, statistics show you actually have a better chance of getting struck by lightning, being crushed by a vending machine, or hitting a hole-in-one on two consecutive par three holes. Why? Because the chances of anyone actually winning a jackpot in a lottery, like the Powerball, are one in 175,223,510. Now, these slim odds haven't stopped people from taking their chances. Did you know that over $65 billion are spent on the lottery in America yearly? This surpasses the national debt in countries like Ecuador with a national debt of 19.9 billion and Lithuania, which has a national debt of 29.55 billion. And it surpasses the amount of money used for cancer research every year. Think about that for a minute. Basically, the lottery is government sanctioned gambling because it generates billions in tax dollars from people mostly that can ill afford to be spending the money, hoping they can win big. Now to many, striking gold will only remain a dream, but for my next guest, Edwin, it became a dream come true. Edwin just started a new job when he and 14 co-workers each put 50 bucks into the lotto ticket pot and they hit a $25 million jackpot. And after dividing the winnings, Edwin walked away with $1.66 million after taxes. Now here he is, right here. <laughs> with his coworkers. But his wife, Jody, says ever since Edwin won the lottery, he's acted like it was his win and his money. And he even made a concerted effort to hide some of his winnings from her. She says their marriage has gone downhill fast and divorce has been threatened numerous times. Take a look. Winning the lottery changed our lives for the worst. Things just started showing up. A hauling trailer, the quad snowmobile, a sand rail, holiday trailer. This was purchased at the same time the holiday trailer was. I think he paid about 68000 He thought it was his money and no one was going to tell him what to do with it. I just wanted to be part of the decisions that he was making. The only thing that I really requested is that we purchase a home. He transferred $500,000 into my account from that. At that point on, he stopped paying for anything. All bills became my responsibility. When we went to the bank, out of the $500,000, there was around $80,000 spent. He got really upset and livid at that point, and he said, where did all the money go? He was so furious. He became so paranoid. He would say, you're not entitled to anything. Like, it was my money, my win. Edwin's made tons of threats to divorce. During one fight, he said, what do you think you're worth? I thought it was 50-50, and he laughed, and he said, well, there's only 50000 left. There should have been 700000 left in the account and he said he just gave it away he was tired of having it i found out he paid for his brother's house i couldn't believe he would just hand over half a million dollars and put it under somebody else's name i absolutely think he got rid of the money so i wouldn't have any access to it okay now first off winning the lottery this was something you were excited about, right? Oh, completely excited, of course, yes. Because this was like $1.666 million <laughs> is a lot of money to y'all. Oh, it was huge, yeah. Because you guys are a working family, and mm -hmm. so having that much money together at one time, game changer. Oh, it was mind-blowing. And how did you find out about it? Uh, Edwin and his crew, they had found out early early in the morning and Edwin he was working out of town at the time new job uh, he was he'd switch positions he was working out on the rigs now instead of just at home so 
He was supposed to call me in the morning, and he didn't call, didn't call, and I kept trying to get a hold That's of him. That's unusual, right? Right, right. He finally picked up his phone when I phoned, and I'm like, what is going on? You're frustrated. You're chewing yeah, him out. You don't right. Why didn't you call me? Right. And You're I, worried. Because at this time, I, I mean, I, did, I didn't know anything, and then, you know, I was like, why didn't you call me? What happened? And we probably argued for about 10, 15 minutes. He still hadn't said anything. No, I had no idea. And then finally, he just came out and said, "Well, would it make you feel any better if I told you I won the lottery?" And I'm like, "What are you? Are you insane? What are you talking about? Don't I, like?" Because I thought he was trying to make a joke of my anger. Then he said, "Absolutely, we won." And I'm, "How much?" He said, "It works out to be about a little over 1.6 million dollars a piece." They're calling in a new crew, and we're coming home. He tells you he's won this 1.66 million. You find out later that he had known this actually for how long? He, it, he found out, I believe it was like really, really early in the morning, probably six. Yes. Did it go through your mind, why didn't he call you right away? Well, I, it did because it blew my mind immediately and I couldn't figure out, like, and he didn't sound excited. He's like, well, yeah, I won the lottery. Like, you know, is that going to make you happy now? And I'm why aren't you screaming up and down and like I started shaking immediately and I'm like this is what do you why what do you have to say about this like aren't you why aren't you excited like and he's just yeah no big deal I'm just coming home now and then when we went to go claim the prize we all met at his boss's house and all the wives are sitting around and oh my god my husband called me at like five o'clock in the morning woke me up and I'm sitting there like I mine didn't even call me like he I had to try to track him down to to yeah. even know what had happened. From the beginning, was this a we won the lottery or was this a he won the lottery? It was definitely a he won the lottery. Why was it he won the lottery instead of we won the lottery? I mean, I wish you could answer that for me. I don't, I don't know. It was just he had won it and it was his, his money and... That well, was... Edwin says he and Jody had marriage problems long before he won the lottery. He says their biggest issue now is his wife has dollar signs dancing in her head. Wow. That's the deal. Let's hear his wow. point of view. When I won the lottery, she was more excited than me. I think that's why she's with me. She has money and signs in her eyes. The only money that I have right now is locked up in investments. Are you upset about that? She has no concept for the value of a dollar. She is obsessed with money. I gave her 500000 to buy the house. There was so much money gone. She couldn't, until this day, explain it to me where it went. I can pinpoint uh, where my lottery winnings went. When I won the lottery, I thought it belonged all to me. I thought I could spend it how I want without asking for permission. Jody and I had issues before I won the lottery. When we first started dating, I did get in trouble with drinking and driving. I had no freedom. Jody had control over me. I felt like I was under house arrest. When I try to talk to you, just sit there like that you know, say anything. She always put me on the spot and make me feel like I do everything wrong. We fight about three, four times a week. I want to get help to make us better, but I think we just been down the rocky road. I feel there's no hope. Do you think this marriage is over? Uh, there's some hope for us, but I don't think we can carry on anymore of how we've been carrying on. Were you on the brink of divorce before you won the lottery? Yeah, I couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. Were you aware that he was that unhappy before? No, I mean, I know we had our problems, but were we on the brink of divorce when he won? Yeah. No, I didn't. I don't agree with that. Then we won the lottery, mm -hmm. and, and you're saying he saw it as no. He won the lottery, mm -hmm. and she wanted to get her hooks into it. That is insulting to me. It really is. What did I ask you for? That we could have a home. That's what, yeah, what else did I ask money you for? for security. A home for security because we were living in rental places that weren't the best. And that's that's what that I wanted. Too. I gave you a bunch of money. What do you mean you gave me a bunch of money? You gave me you money. You wanted to go to school. You wanted to have money for security, and I gave it to you. I do appreciate what you do, but you make me sound like this you know, evil person that's like, give me your money, give me your money. Are you kidding me? It's insulting to me. 
Did, did you feel like it, that you did win the lottery? That it was you, not not the two of you? Yes, at the time of when I won it, yes. Well, so, where did all the lottery money go? What Jody accuses Edwin of buying and what his priorities were when we come back. We'll talk about all that next. <laughs> bought your brother that house for half a million dollars? I gave it to him to help him out, get him on his feet. Let's be honest, we all knew it was to hide assets. And later... My blow dryer was all smashed and my necklaces were like ripped into pieces. And then when I went to put on my lip gloss, I could smell something awful. I wiped them with my butt. I was mad and that's how I got back at her. After I found out he paid for his brother's house, I did get a lawyer because we were fighting massively at that point and talking about divorce. The lawyer did tell me I was absolutely entitled to have. Edwin's response when I told him what she said is just to laugh and he still didn't believe it. He did say there's no way I was getting half of his stuff. I do think our marriage went downhill after Edwin won the lottery. He completely betrayed our family and robbed us of our future. Well, I'm talking with Jody and her husband, Edwin, who won $1.66 million two years ago from winning a lottery ticket he and his co-workers purchased. So, you know, everybody's always curious, what do you do when you win? What do you spend money on when you mm -hmm. win the lottery? And you guys were very forthcoming with us about that. So we, we, we put together what you, you spent... Um, what you spent the money on. Here's what Edwin's personal purchases were. Um, you bought three trucks up here, different kinds of trucks. Then you, you spent $39,000 on, what is this thing? It's a sand rail. A sand rail, yeah. which is like a dune buggy? Yeah. Yeah. Side okay. side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm getting you on that, okay. And this is like a four-wheeler? Yeah. It's a, a, a quad runner type yeah. thing. And a snowmobile. And what is this? It's just a utility trailer. Oh, that's a trailer. Yeah. To put these things in. Yeah. Okay. And then this is like a, a motor home type. Toy hauler. Yeah, yeah. Trailer. And then a motorcycle. Yep. Or is this is is this the house you bought for your brother? Yes. So Ours. down here, this is uh, the purchases that you made for Jody and the children. This was the house for the family, right? Yeah. Okay. And then furnishings for the house, and then uh, a, a car for the family, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then this was, I see ears, <laughs> so was this like a vacation? Yeah, it was Disney World. This was Disney World? And uh, this was to Mexico? Uh, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Okay. I recognize that sign, so that was a trip out here, right? Right. Welcome back. Thank um, you. <laughs> then he bought you uh, rings to go with your wedding ring. Right. And then, um, what is this? Looks no like idea. a haircut, but I definitely didn't spend 2000 on a haircut, so I, I don't... Not. <laughs> Beauty school. Oh, oh, okay. These personal purchases here were 755000 and here, 605000 um, for a grand total of $1,360,000. So when you add it all up, that's where 1.3 of it went. So that's like 300000 left over. But there's... Mm -hmm. That seemed like a lot of money gone, but there's some assets in there, like two right. houses and you know, cars and things like that. Yeah. So that leaves 300000 roughly, left this cash, but you say there's this 50000 left in the account, so you're mm -hmm. saying, well, there's a quarter million bucks missing, right? Mm -hmm. The question is, where'd that money go? Mm -hmm. Is there just 50000 left in the account? I mean, is a quarter million oh, missing? Right. You thought divorce was imminent, right? Yeah. D did you Very start so. kind of moving money around? No, I just helped my brothers out because they were both struggling. 
You bought your brother that house for half a million dollars? I gave it to him to help him out, get him on his feet. And you thought, what's that all about, right? Well, I had no idea it happened till months later. Right. Right. And did you object to that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course I did. Well, because, I mean, it was, I think it was the way it was done. I mean, let's be honest, we all knew it was to hide assets. Yeah. Was it to hide assets? More or less. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a different answer than you gave me like 30 seconds ago, because I said you started moving money around because you thought divorce was imminent. Yeah, well, I thought that way before, but uh, it sounds like I was hiding money, but in reality, I was helping my brother out, and I, we were, he was going to pay me back a little bit, or if we work things out, I can get the house back in our name, and there would be no doubt about doing it that way. I knew something was going on. He finally gave me his Facebook password. I was sick to my stomach. A whole string of messages come up, and I was reading them and just getting more and more disgusted. I was getting Brooke ready for her dance competition. Edwin's cell phone rang, and so I answered it. And then when I said hello, I could hear somebody there, but then they just hung up. I don't know why, but right away, my stomach just dropped. I knew something was going on. I did call the number right back, and it was a woman on the phone. I just said, you were calling my husband's phone, and then she just right away got really defensive. Oh, no, no, nothing's going on, nothing's going on. I went out once with a girl I knew since grade five. When we went out for coffee, we were just friends. Nothing happened. After arguing for a little while, he finally gave me his Facebook password. I was sick to my stomach. A whole string of messages come up, and I was reading them and just getting more and more disgusted. They were just like, greedy, honey, I miss you. I didn't tell Jody because I knew it would blow up into an argument. I said, well, I don't want you talking to her anymore. Okay, this bothered you a lot? Oh, yes. Did he cross the line here? Absolutely, I believe he did. Do you think you did? No, I don't. It was a girl I went to school since grade five. I haven't seen her in a long time. She ran into me on Facebook. We were playing a harmless game, Angry Birds, whatever. <clears throat> Jody provided us some of Edwin's Facebook messages between Edwin and the friend. And here are some of the excerpts, March 29th, 2011, 9, 31 p.m. Edwin, oh, they're nice, though. Just wait till you get used to it. Then you'll love it more than me. What cheat did you use? The friend, shaker. Edwin, well, I can shake it better. Smile. Ten minutes later, Edwin, Oh, just give it some time. It is just getting to know you. Then you will be paying more attention to it than me. Edwin, come on, sweetie. You have to give me time to catch up to you. Then I'm supposed to be on top, remember? 18 minutes later, Edwin, well, sunshine, I'm going to hit the hay. Holy long day, hey? Edwin. But you have a good night, friend. You too, hon. Miss you, heart. Miss you too. What is with the heart? Smile. Besides that, it means love, friend. Ha ha. Yeah, it means love. Laugh out loud. Smile. Hearts. <laughs> love, love, love. Laugh out loud. Edwin, okay, silly. I would give it back, but I don't know, so I will just stick with the smile. So, heart symbol. Uh, take care, sweet dreams. So it just kind of goes on like that. As bad as that conversation sounded, it's not what everybody thinks. We were talking about that game we were playing. I think she wasn't so worried about how you got to the next level as she was the hun and the sweetie exactly and heart, heart, heart and all of that, which I'm pretty sure wasn't Angry Birds no. specific. It's more like angry wife game. Um, yeah. that, that's what, what you objected to, right? Right. Um, and it was the fact that, I mean, he did go meet her for coffee a couple times. I just met her once, and that was it. Just but, went for see, coffee. my thing is, if you weren't doing anything wrong, then why would you call me and say you were working late? Because if I actually go. said, I'm going to go for a coffee with this girl I haven't seen since high that school. That didn't send up any red flags oh, that maybe oh. it was over the line. That's why you had to 
Because if I, I went your way, it would have hit the fan anyway, so. Edwin, when you're ta how would you feel if you read stuff like I was talking to somebody like that? Uh, I feel bad, but I wouldn't think that you're trying to hook up with them. The Dr. Phil definition of cheating, if you wouldn't do it with her stand in there? I have once with her friend, yeah, true, but... Then, if, if you wouldn't do it with her standing there, then that's flirting or cheating or crossing the line. If you wouldn't do it with her, if you wouldn't have typed that stuff to her and done those hearts and stuff with her sitting right there next to you, then it's probably not the best idea to do it, right? Sure, yeah. And you wouldn't have done that if she'd been sitting there, would you? No. Let's take a break. Coming up, Jody's mom, Linda, is here and says Edwin's lottery win has turned him into a jerk. Um, well, he's not so fond of her at this point either. We'll talk about all that when we come back. Edwin used to be an amazing dad before he won the lottery. Now, he is very selfish and very self-centered. Well, I'm sitting here with a couple of millionaires because Edwin became a millionaire overnight when he won a work pool lottery two years ago. His wife Jody says a lot of their marriage problems stem from that big win. But she isn't the only one who says the money changed things. Jody's mom, Linda, says winning the lottery turned Edwin from being the sweetest guy to a downright jerk. Take a look. Edwin and I had a very good relationship before he won the lottery. He was a really, really nice guy. Now, he is very selfish and very self-centered. What Edwin wants, Edwin gets. Edwin used to be an amazing dad. Now, he just kind of completely ignores both the girls. He does pay a lot of attention to his daughter, but not to the twins. It is very painful now, the way things are. Well, Linda and Edwin haven't spoken to each other in almost three weeks. Now, the last time they spoke was before a big fight that erupted in the Dominican Republic while on a family vacation. Take a look. About two weeks ago, we all went on a vacation in the Dominican. Edwin was drunker than a skunk. At one o'clock in the morning, I had a knock on the door and it, he was just in his underwear. Security brought me back to the room because I was lost after going for a swim in the ocean. I was really frustrated and angry and just exploded and I tried to push him out of the room. Then he became really angry and started yelling, you're going to hit me, you're going to abuse me and then he started like slapping himself really hard. So I went into their room, I hollered at Edwin and I grabbed him and I pushed him onto the bed. Security then came upstairs and I had went into the other room. That night I could hear a whole bunch of banging. So when I went into the room the next morning, my blow jar was all smashed and my flat iron was broken. My necklaces were like ripped into pieces and I picked up my makeup brush. It was all like stuck together and I'm like, what the heck is this? pieces of like poop and then when I went to put on my lip gloss I could smell something awful and I looked in the tube and there was like poop like around the tube that I <laughs> just spread all over my mouth. I wiped them with my butt just popped my head I was mad and that's how I got back at her. Edwin and I have not even seen each other since the vacation. Right now, I have such hate for him, I won't talk to him. You don't even have the nerve to look at me. No, no. Don't. Oh. T yes, Dr. Phil. Tell me again about these makeup brushes and lip gloss. I got back, I was so mad and drunk that I wiped her brushes with my butt and broke yeah. her stuff. As sick as it sounds, sick. yes. Yeah. It's like, here's poop in your face, dear. The next morning, you, you come in and all your stuff's destroyed. 
Some of it, yeah. And then you go to put your makeup on. And did you actually use the <laughs> lip gloss? Yeah, I, I mean, hours later we were going out for dinner. And obviously I checked all my other makeup over and it was fine. And then I grabbed my tube of lipstick and went to put it on. And I'm like, oh my God, what is that? And I smelled and immediately freaked out, of course, and scrubbing, trying to wash my face. Um, um, how, how do you feel about that? Oh, I feel, feel bad about it. Okay. But at the time, I wasn't in the right state of mind. I wasn't thinking. But you, you do recognize that's like really yeah. bad idea. Yes. I do not like her treated like you treat her. No, it's I'm not married that. to Jody, not to you. How did you get in an argument over a cup of sand? It was a cruise. I went swimming. I got a cup of sand for a souvenir or whatever to bring back home. I got off the boat. I give it to her. It's not a big deal. It's only a cup of oh sand. Oh, my God, it was. No. But I give it to her. Like my baby was fussing with Grandma on the front of the boat, so I hop off. We were at the back. I go get my baby girl, bring her back to Shore, cause we're in there, cause in, give the shore. We're in Give the like, hold on to this, because I wanted to bring it home. Sentimental value to me, right? She gives it to her daughter. And then her daughter gives it to Grandma, and Grandma's, what the hell is this for, and throws it right out. No, I didn't. I carried it for quite a ways. Well, if you lose a cup of sand at the beach... I wasn't beach, mad about the sand. Can you just get another yeah, cup of I sand? Tried. You're at I the did. beach. I did. Okay, all right, just check it. But that it was wasn't over the cup of sand. It was over the... Let's be real here. You <laughs> no, were no. upset. I just want to be sure I understood it, right, that there was a fight over sand yes. at the beach. Because yeah, yeah. if the there's sand. one thing that's plentiful at the beach, it's sand. I just... <laughs> Coming up, Jody says Edwin has an alcohol problem and needs to get that under control. Edwin doesn't think he has a problem, but does say he occasionally drinks to escape her nagging. We'll talk about that when we come back because I'm, I'm trying to find a way to climb back up the ladder here. We'll be right back. I do think Edwin has a drinking problem. I don't think I have a drinking problem. If I wanted to stop, I could. When Edwin drinks, he gets really mean and hurtful. When she's in one of her moods, I could drink that six pack. Like no tomorrow. I feel drinking is a, a reality escape for me. Does he have a drinking problem? I believe he does. I mean, he doesn't drink all the time, but I believe it can get out of hand, most definitely. You were concerned when you went on this vacation? Yes, because... I was concerned before we went on that vacation. Edwin, I hate when you drink. I hate it. Because you get I mean. I can't even have a few drinks. You think I'm an alcoholic? Because you can't have a few. No, I can't. Your attitude changes completely when you're drinking. You said whenever you met, you had lost your driver's license due to drinking. Yeah, I had an impaired previous before we met. Three? You had a DUI. Have you had more than one? Yes, I have. How many? No, three in over the past 10 years. Three? No. Okay, well, your chances of getting a DUI are like one in 5,000. So you're, I mean, if, if you've gotten hit three times, you must be drinking and driving with a fair amount of frequency if you've been hit three times. You, you had a blow box on your car for two years. Yeah, in my truck. Then Christmas, just this last year, were you in jail? Oh, I got put in the holding tanks. Drunk tank? Yeah. Just well, this last Christmas. Christmas party. And then on the vacation where you were talking about you showed up at the door of your room, drunk in your underwear? Oh, I went to the beach to get another cup of sand. <laughs> There's that sand again. Okay. Yeah. So, but you showed up at your door, drunk in your underwear, with another cup of sand, uh, <laughs> with security, and then you got, and you were drunk enough that you tore up her hair dryer and some of her stuff and then you violated her makeup brushes and lip gloss <laughs> in a way that you got to be pretty drunk for that to yes. make sense yes i mean i wouldn't do that in a sober state of mind there's a pattern here that you got to think that's starting to uh and I, i'm just wondering um 
What are you so angry about? I brought all my feelings up. I don't let them on. I got nobody to talk to. You can you talk seem, to me. You don't listen to me. You seem really angry. And now you're behaving in a very uh, chip-on-your-shoulder, abrasive way. Yep. Now, you say, look, that's not all coming from the inside out. A lot of that is I'm reacting to the fact that she is nagging me, controlling me, picking at me, and bickering constantly to the point that I'm just like, help, shoot. It doesn't matter what I do. Put me out of my misery. I, you know, hell yes. I'll, I'll, I'll admit to anything. What, just long, shut up. Yeah, pretty much. If, if, you'll, just, if you'll just shut up. I get that. You're frustrated. I also get that you have a marriage and a family here, and you have a precious daughter. Yes, I do. She loves her daddy, and she loves her mother. Yes, she does. And you can't be pissed off at her and bottled up inside and not change who you are for that little girl. You think you can. You think you can be all loving with her and just pissed off over here. But let me no, tell you, I understand that. anger and bitterness is a pervasive emotion. And it goes into every relationship and everything you have. And doesn't she deserve better than that. Doesn't she, does. she deserve all of her daddy? No. Yeah. Doesn't she deserve a happy home? No, she deserves more than that. You guys think about that for a minute. The last time I saw my mom and I'd been fighting, it just made me really scared and nervous. It makes me sad because, like, I want them just happy. Brooke has definitely developed animosity towards Edwin. Once we asked her to go brush her teeth, but she had said no. And so he was mopping up like dog pee, and then he came around and chased her up the stairs. He caught her, and he was standing over top of her, and he put the mop on her face. Edwin didn't really see anything wrong with what he did. When Edwin came into Jody's life, what she loved most about him was how well he connected with her girls from a prior relationship. Now, both she and her mom, Linda, say it's a struggle for him to even acknowledge their presence. Um, and that creates tension, and it's confusing for him. And, you know, you've, you've said that you're kind of letting them set the tone, right? Yeah, that not me, they are. It's, it's just kind of up to them you know, if they want to engage, they don't. Uh, I acknowledge their presence. Yeah. I know they're there. Yeah. I, I say, hi, how's it going, girls? How was school or whatever? But it's like talking to them. I get no reply back. You don't a lot of the time, no. No. Most of the time. No. no. I want you to imagine for me. I want you to fast forward and say, let's assume that this marriage falls apart. Let's assume that, that, that you're right, you've had all you can take, this marriage falls apart. Fast forward six, seven years, she's remarried, and your daughter is now living in a home with her and her new husband. Yep. Yeah. How would you want that new husband to make your daughter feel about herself? Good, happy, treat her. Like How it. would you want him to make her feel about herself? Here's what one of the twins had to say about what's <laughs> going on in your home right now. 
see my mom and Edwin fighting, it makes me sad because, like, I want them just happy. The last time I saw my mom and Edwin fighting was in Punta Cana, and it was actually a really big fight. And it just made me really scared and nervous because I didn't know what was going to happen. And I went to my little baby sister to protect her, and, like, I was just scared for her. I knew he was out of his mind. Of course, he was like hitting himself in the face, which I thought he was going to hit mom, which I started crying. I love her. <laughs> I don't want her to be sad, too. Sorry? That sounds really bad. <laughs> That's how it is. But I'm getting attacked here. It's both of us, but it's not only me going, drinking, and coming home and just yelling to scare the poor little girl. Jody and Edwin came on this show because they said they really wanted to find some peace and work this out. Can that happen? I'm going to tell you what I think when we come back. I went to Dr. Phil because I didn't feel like I could handle it anymore. As you look at Dr. Phil's or last hope because with the girls and stuff, it can't keep going on like it's going on. I definitely want Dr. Phil to be able to get Edwin some help of some kind. He won the lottery, and that that is it's it it, it should be happy. It creates disequilibrium, though. Mm -hmm. And, and it's that first year, that first 18 months, that creates all kinds of problems. Oh, it does. I mean, you, you look at people that win the lottery. There's these unlucky lottery winners. Uh, Denise Rossi, $1.3 million, lied during divorce proceedings about winnings, and the judge awarded the money to their ex. <laughs> Willie Hurt, $3.1 million, charged for murder. Ibby, and I can't pronounce the last name, $5 million, killed by her husband. Evelyn Adams, $5.4 million, gambled the money away, now broke. Uh, Jeffrey Dampierre, $20 million, killed by sister-in-law. Billy Bob Harrell Jr., $31 million, committed suicide. Jack Whitaker, $315 million, wish never won the money. I mean, these things can just destroy people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, Maslow described it. We have these needs, but you know what happens? Y you win the lottery, and all of this love, Certainly. belonging, and esteem, mm -hmm. a lot of that comes from feeling like we have worth by what we do, and we feel like we didn't do anything for this, and we kind of lose our balance. Don't lose your equilibrium here. Okay. If you will let me bring you some help here, you will be so much better in a short period of time, you won't believe it. If you will just decide... If you will just decide to stop being a victim and start being a leader in this situation and lead your family where it needs to go, you will be amazed what you can create. I will get you the help to do this. Give me 90 days to work on this. You will be amazed how much right. better this will be. Will you do that? <laughs> and, and I know, I, I know that you work and you're away. I, one, of, one of the resources that we have here that, that Jay and I have created is Doctor on Demand. Right. I, I know you've heard about it, and yeah. everybody uses it for their medical needs. But we also have it for psychological counseling as well, where you don't even have to leave your house.